Hello everyone, this is Alex Bavalsik from HowToDoTech.com and today I'm going to show you how to back up your iOS device. So, the best way to see all the options you have of backing up your iOS device is to go to an iTunes on either a Mac or a PC, Windows PC. And from there you can click on whatever device is plugged in or is located on your network and showing in iTunes by going to the top right and then if you scroll down on the summary page you'll see this backup section right here. Now from here I can choose on the left to back up with iCloud or this computer. If I choose this computer it's really recommended that you use the lightning to USB cable or 30 pin if you're still using 30 pin and plug it in because this can take a while. I can also choose to encrypt my local backup which I'm not choosing to do and then we have controls on the right. Now, if I restored from backup, you would need previous backups, but the idea is if I do something to my device that I don't like, um, for whatever reason, maybe it crashes or something goes wrong with it, if I hit restore backup, it'll show me the different backups on different dates. All these are Alex's iPod, they're all on different dates though. So I go to this one, it's 12.25, if I go here, 12.27, or 6.11, they're, they're really not ordered. I can cancel or I can restore it from that point. Now the good part about that is it's better than a full restore as if you were restoring it to factory settings just because if you've configured some settings since the day you've gotten it you don't have to reconfigure all those and it will still fix the problem. Now if I want to back up now all I have to do is click the button and backing up now is normally great before you're changing a lot of things that are going to go on the device. Maybe I'm going to add a lot of movies, TV shows, maybe I'm going to um, change the software however if you do upgrade software like right now I'm using iOS 6 when I upgrade to iOS 7 it will automatically set a backup point if I use the my laptop to upgrade to iOS 7 it will automatically make a restore point that way I don't have to hit backup now beforehand it's also going to transfer purchases it's like a sync but it's also going to backup and it's really not going to transfer anything to the device it will transfer purchases from the device though The other way to back up your device is to use iCloud. And if I just select iCloud from here, I really can't do much from the computer. I can choose to encrypt the local backup, of course, and it will show me the information, but it is backed up to iCloud instead of the laptop. Now, the best way to look at iCloud backups is to actually look at The best way to look at iCloud backups is to actually look at it on your device. Although backing up to a PC or Mac can be a great option for a lot of people, for some it's not an option whatsoever. A lot of people don't plug in their iDevices to their computers a lot, and this is great because iOS can be totally self-sufficient. However, you're not going to get a lot of backups, which can be bad if you have a sudden crash. However, there is a different option provided by Apple, and that is iCloud backup. So in settings, this is iOS 6, but iOS 7 is basically the same. It just looks a little different. If I go down to iCloud, and then from here, scroll all the way down to Storage and Backup, I can change a couple options, like my total storage, my available storage. I can manage the storage that I have, change the plan, and then turn on iCloud Backup. Now, the way storage counts is going to be things that Apple doesn't already have in file for iTunes. Now that can be a little confusing, so what you have to ask yourself is, did I get this directly from iTunes? Any music, movies, or TV shows purchased from iTunes will not count against storage. Podcasts purchased on iTunes will not count against storage. Things that will count against storage are not the actual app itself, but any saved app data. So if I, say, have a racing game and I do some races, and eventually the data gets saved from me winning those races. That data will count against your total storage. Also, any videos or pictures you've taken with your device will count against your storage and documents. Now, if I want to look at the things that are stored currently, I can go to Manage Storage. And then from here, I can see I have a couple documents and data stored from these apps. These were from past iCloud backups, but as you can see, I deleted most of it when I went to backing up on my laptop but some are still there I could delete those just by going in to say doodle jump and then from here I can edit and I can delete all of it and once I delete that all of the space that was taking up in iCloud is no longer taken up it's freed although it was so minuscule it really didn't matter I can also change my storage plan from here or by going back 
And as you can see, the pricing isn't too bad. We have $20 for 10 gigabytes a year. So $20 a year for 10 gigabytes, 40 for 20, and then 100 for 50. So that's not too bad, but I'm fine with free, obviously. I'm not storing much on there. And finally, the last thing you would have to do is go to iCloud Backup and turn that on. Now, I'm not going to leave this on because, as you can see, as soon as I do this, my iPod Touch will no longer s sync with my computer when I plug it into iTunes. But I like doing that, so I'm going to hit Cancel. Now, one of the great things about iCloud Backup is when you do it, you can still use your device while it's backing up. You're just going to want to make sure your device is always on and always connected to the Internet so it can back up. It's really simple. All you have to do is hit the button normally when it's on. Um, after you have the on switch, there'll be a button right below here, and it will say back up now. And once you click that, you can back up your device, and it's pretty simple from there. So we hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in a comment below or email us at howtodotechyt at gmail.com. If you would like something to refer back to, we do have a written tutorial on howtodotech.com, and it's linked in the description for your convenience. Also, if you have any suggestions for future videos, any questions about how to do things, you can email us at howtodotechyt at gmail.com for a chance to be featured in a future video. So now you have the option to click on one of these many playlists of ours to go to more videos so you can get a little smarter with technology. I am Alex Bavalsik and I will see you next time.